All right, for section 1.2, we're talking about solving literal equations, which means um, basically I'm solving for x or something like that. And you should be familiar with this, like when you solve an equation for y so that you could put it in your graphing calculator. So this is just setting it up a little bit differently. So here I have this equation, which happens to be the volume of a um, cylinder. Uh, I'm sorry, a cone, and I want to solve for h, meaning I want to get h by itself. So because of this fraction, probably the first thing that I want to do is multiply both sides by 3. So I get 3v, and then I get the pi r squared h. And then to get h by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by pi r squared. So I end up with h equals... 3v divided by pi r squared, and that's the solution. Uh, so for the next one, I want to solve for b1. So I showed you a couple different ways to do it. The first way doesn't so look as pretty, um, but it is right. So the first one, we distributed the 1 half, equal sign right here, we distributed the 1 half h, and we ended up with 1 half h b1 and 1 half h b2. I want b1 by itself, so I'm going to move this to the other side. So I'm going to subtract the 1 half hb2. So now I end up with this. And then I want to divide all of this by that 1 half h. So I end up with b1 is equal to all of this, which I know doesn't look pretty, but that's an answer. Or another way to approach it. When I've got this fraction that I don't like, I can multiply both sides by 2. So if I do that, I end up with 2a equals h b1 plus b2. And then I could divide by that h, and I end up with this. And then I could subtract the b2, and I get this solution. So both solutions would be right, and there are probably other ways to do it too, but those are just two options. Okay, the next one is sort of like a problem that we did earlier. Uh, we're solving for x. And so I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to take the 3 and divide both sides by it. But because I'm at absolute value, it's got to be plus c over 3 and minus c over 3. And remember what we talked about in class. This disclaimer here about c being greater than 0, that's there because an absolute value can never equal a negative number. But when we're solving equations, we always solve with a positive and negative. So think of it that way. Keep that in mind. So we end up with x equals c over 3 plus d and negative c over 3 plus d. There's two solutions. Same thing here. I have this equation. I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to put the negative b and the positive b. And then I'm going to uh, add a to both sides, and I'm going to divide by 2. So I end up with b plus a divided by 2, and negative b plus a divided by 2. All right, so the next one, we have a word problem. The length of a room is 9 feet less than twice the width of the room. The perimeter of the room is 48 feet. Find the length and the width of the room. So, formula for perimeter is 2L plus 2W. So, we're reading what it says. The length of the room is, means equals, 9 feet less than, which means minus 9, twice the width, which is 2W. Um, and then our width is just W. So if I replace those into this equation, I get 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, and the perimeter of the room is 48. So now we're going to solve this. We're going to distribute. We're going to combine like terms. We're going to move that 18 and then divide by 6, so the width is 11. So the width of the room is 11. Substitute that back in here, 2 times 11 minus 9, the length of the room is going to be 13. Okay, the next problem. So this one is a similar triangle problem. So if you look at this, you've got to be aware about the dimensions because they're talking about feet and feet and feet and then all 
of a sudden inches. So you can't just set up the proportions. Now we could convert this inches to feet and then work it out that way. But what I did is I converted the feet to inches. So I got 600 inches here and I got 48 inches here. And then I set up my proportions. Now this is what I did. I did X over 48 and 600 over 3. You could have done X over 600 and 48 over 3, um, and they all would have worked the same way. And then we're going to cross multiply, and we end up with 800 feet. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We end up with 9,600 inches, but the answer here is supposed to be in feet. So we divide that by 12, and we get 800 feet. Sorry. All right, the next one is talking about investments and interest rates. So we have this formula, principal times rate times time. But in this case, the time is always a year because it says annual interest rate. So what they said is I invested $4,600 at a rate of 6.8%. Now I need to invest some more money in a 9% interest but I want the total return at the end of the year on all of my money to be 8%. So I like to set up these boxes. It's like a chemistry equation. So I have $4,600 at 6.8%. I have another amount that I don't know yet at 9%. And then at the end of the year, I'm going to have 46 plus X. I'm sorry, it's not very clear. 46 plus X and that's going to end up being 8%. And all of this is going to end up being the same amount. So 4,600 times 6.8% plus some other value times 9% is equal to all of my money, which is 4,600 plus X times 8%. So remember to treat a percentage, to work with a percentage, 8% is the same thing as 8 over 100. Or it's the same thing as 0.08. So I'm going to take the 6.8% and multiply it here, and I get $312.80. I'm going to multiply this and get 0.09x. And then I'm going to distribute this 8% to both of these, and I get 368 and 8% x. And now I just have to combine like terms. So I moved the 368 over here and got negative 55.2. I moved the 0.9 over here and I got negative 0.01x and then divide both sides and I get 5520. So what that means is I need to invest $5,520 at 9% in order for all of my money to be ending up with an 8% return in the end.